Today's topic is nutrition, work, and productivity with Veronica Yu. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Q&A showdown. My name is Richard. Today's topic is uh, we're going to talk about food, work, and productivity. And uh, the Q&A showdown is a show about uh, I, touch, I touch different topics like life insurance, real estate, business, entrepreneurship, and much more. And I have guest appearances by professionals from different industries who share their knowledge. And today I have a special guest. Her name is Veronica. She, uh, she agreed to be on the show and as, uh, I thank her in advance. And uh, a little bit about her, she's a nutritionist. She's an instructor. She is a book author. She has several books out. One of the books she has is 911 Detox. She has another one, Go Raw, Get Lean. And she has, I think, another one with Greg, Greg Swanson, which is called The Breakthrough Yo-Yo. And she is a WBFF professional athlete, which stands for World Beauty, Fashion, and Fitness. So it is my pleasure to have Veronica here. So Veronica, tell everybody who you are, uh, what you do exactly, and uh, we'll take it from there. Oh, great. Thank you. Uh, that was quite an uh, introduction about me. <laughs> um, uh, so hi, Richard and everyone. Uh, I actually, I don't know how to start because I got into this health and fitness industry over 20 years ago. Only when I start because I was very, very weak and I was only 80 pounds. So, yes. So I just wanted to be stronger. And then I just wanted to like, because I was in actually a uh, fashion industry. So I just want to actually get through day. That's why I just got into a uh, fitness industry. I started to train. And now what happened? I completely changed my profession as a nutritionist and functional medicine health coach. And um I just teach my students and also, you know, coach my clients and patients just like uh, um, how I live my life. It's like uh, I believe in lifestyle. So that's what I do. So um, some of the clients that they come to see me for weight loss because they have a heart to lose weight. And some of the clients, they have a chronic illnesses. So actually, they want to improve their lifestyle by eating properly and doing the right thing. So they come to see me. So I help them either one-on-one -on -one coaching or even group coaching. And also, I help my student who is already in profession in this industry, like personal trainer and nutritionist. And they need the, every year the credit, right? So to get their, uh, just keep their license. So that actually I give them some workshop as well for a CEO course. So that's what I do. Okay. Uh, we're gonna dive into the questions. Uh, I know eating healthy, well, everybody knows that eating healthy is uh, very important. Uh, what, what uh, during the day we know we, we need to eat uh, three meals a day uh, what would you recommend uh, for breakfast dinner lunch what would be the right uh, the proper meals for us to eat for us to have energy and uh, to be productive at work it's actually a really good question um, you know we all think about the um, everyday meal is a good breakfast lunch and dinner and it's been like that's usually, you know, basically regular, typically people eat like a breakfast around like a seven to 8 a.m. And some people they are too busy. They just on the go in a car. They drink something or a coffee and some muffin, right? And then usually lunch is at work. They have like a 12 to between 1 or 2 p.m. That's what they have their lunch. And then dinner is usually when they finish um, 5 p.m. work and then they 
eat like 5.30 to up to 7 p.m., right? It's a typical meal. But to be honest, uh, going through with the, like my experience with my clients and what I believe, you don't have to have a three meals. Some people, it really depends on your lifestyle and or most of people, they actually plan their eating schedule according to their work schedule, right? And any event, they, they evolve with the work schedule. That's why most of people, when they go on to a meal plan, they do really well Monday to Friday. And then weekend, you know what? I don't have to go to work. So most of the people, they don't even want to wake up at the same time. They used to wake up. Am I right? <laughs> So sometimes, you know, they kind of treat themselves or they go out eat and then they eat different times. So what I'm saying here, uh, if you're not a, a breakfast person, you don't have to have a breakfast. And if you're not a person that like, you know, eating late, then you don't have to have dinner. So what I'm saying is that... Um, Whatever you eat, two meals or three meals, even some people four meals. When I was an athlete, when I compete, I used to have four to five meals a day because I have to squeeze all this macronutrient portion in a day of my meal plan. So it really depends what, what is your health goal. And like uh, you have to really enjoy your meal as well. But at the same time, most importantly, you have to have the right nutrient. So that's the most important. So uh, more, I wanted to say like, it doesn't matter you have three meals or two meals. Like uh, most important is do not graze every day, like every couple of hours, because that's not good. Some people, when they think about, I don't really eat a lot, Veronica, but the thing is like, uh, yeah, actually I graze all day. Because what happens when you graze all day is every time you eat, you actually spike your blood sugar level and it has to come down. It takes about like a one to two hours to come down. When you come down, if you keep on grazing, you never have a chance to bring down your blood sugar level. So when your blood sugar level is always up, that's where uh, body tend to uh, deposit your uh, body fat. So that's why a lot of people, they're sitting and then constantly grazing the meal. At the end, they realize, oh, wow, you know, I, I, other place I'm fine, but I can keep on having belly fat. And I feel sluggish after eat. Those are the actually, um, because of you always spike your blood sugar level, that's the ended up the end that you have a low energy level. And then you kind of, uh, you're not hungry, but you crave more like you know sugar and caffeine or even salt that's what happening so i suggest you know that anyone who listen this one think of this way um you know what if i'm not a breakfast person i'm not going to have a breakfast but i'm going to hydrate myself because remember this one when you wake up in the morning over the night you are not really hydrating yourself so your organs or the body is a little bit dehydrated so the best thing you can do to yourself, just uh, enough, just hydrate yourself in the morning. And then if you're going to start from your breakfast, 11 a.m. or 12 p.m., that's great. When you have that, have, try to have a whole food, like a not processed. Like processed means like, you know, it's the manufacturer that made it, right? So when you look at like, uh, of course, the bread, the pasta, even cereal, and anything, just packaged food, stick to like a whole food. Like you can go to farmer's market or even anything that food that when you look at the food that there's no nutrition label in it. So when you go buy carrots, I don't think that there's a nutrition label in it, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? So you, you try to stick to, try to stick to uh, those like whole food. Have like lean. This is like a, my experience, uh, not only as an athlete and with my client when I see it, you, it's better off for every meal you actually add in some protein, the good source of protein, quality source of protein, because the body, it takes energy to break down those protein, right? So, and then also it feels you really satiated. So it's good to have some protein every your meal. And then you have some uh, phytonutrient, which is like a, a plant-based, like some uh, non-starch or starch carbohydrate, which is the vegetable. And they have some healthy fat. So 
that's what you have to stick to it. If you keep on going to like processed food and they add so much chemical and they add MSG, they add like, uh, you, don't, you don't even know they have is the GMO or not. And plus the most importantly, like they add those um, uh, vegetable oil that, you know, like it's not good for your body down the road. It's uh, um, have the carcinogen as uh, people might. Like I'm not saying, but people might, they can cause the cancer or other chronic illnesses. And the more importantly, let's say a uh, vegetable oil, like a canola oil and sunflower seed oil. And all this vegetable oil is actually causing inflammation in your body. So when your body gets inflamed, the down the road, it can actually cause some pain and uh, even some disease. So you want to avoid that. So basically you want to stay in the healthy fat. Uh, it can be like, uh, if I give you some detail, it can be like avocado, coconut oil, and you can have like a grass fed, like a butter or a key, or even like some nuts and seed, you know, that's where you want to stick to. Even uh, olive oil, you want to go for like extra virgin, first depressed olive oil. And those things are important. So like a stick to just those vegetables, um, those plant-based oil, and then some of the saturate um, fats, but it's such a good source. So those kind of oil, if you stick to it, that's a healthy fat. It's good for you. So that's what I wanted to tell you. Like, there's no really time frame. Like, oh, oh don't eat after p uh, eight p.m. or oh, you you cannot skip your breakfast. There's no rules. Everybody's different. So depends on how you feel. When you eat certain time, you feel great and you get result, and you have to stick to it. I had I had planned some uh, questions, but now you went in so many directions. Uh, I have to go into. Uh, you mentioned about protein. I wanted to ask you that before. Uh, okay. What what food uh, has protein? Like. Maybe? Oh, okay. There yeah. is like a protein. Is there like an animal based protein, and there is a plant based protein. So if you are not vegan you can go on to the animal-based protein. But remember this one, like uh, uh, all the red meat or even wild uh, game meat or even uh, like uh, poultry, like a chicken and turkey or even like the fishes, they're all good. Just the fact that you have to focus on the source, the where it comes from. Is it conventionally grown meat or is it uh, organically grown? Like, uh, for instance, a grass fed is, is fed with the grass or is it conventionally grown, which is like they uh, inject the antibiotic. You know, they actually um, you know, fed with corn or grains. And those are the difference. So if you choose organic grass fed uh, beef, actually it's high in omega-3. So it's uh, good but beneficial for your body. And then let's say if you choose like a, chicken or turkey or uh, even eggs everything is like a pasteurized it's like organic um you know free range those pasteurized they are the you wanted to go to you wanted to get that instead of just regular just uh, chicken those are the conventionally grown so it's actually not good for your body so that's what you have to think and if it's a fish you want to go to wild caught fish and the best source is like uh, sockeye salmon. You can get some halibut. Uh, even the sockeye salmon is high in uh, the fatty acid, but truly that's a good high in omega-3, so which is good for you. So it brings down the inflammation as well. So you want to stick to that. And um, if you want to go for egg, it's the same thing. It's so pasteurized, you know, organic free range, pasteurized eggs. That's what you want to go for. So those are the animal protein source. And if you are vegan, um, well, there is like a tempeh, which is a fermented uh, soya bean, or there's tofu, the sauce of, made from soya bean. And you can also go to like a spirulina. It's coming from the, uh, the sea, the ocean. It's like a sea vegetable, but high in protein. And uh, um, beans, like especially black beans, has a really high in uh, protein content. So you want to go for it if you are vegan. So that, or other nuts and seeds. So also there is a vegetable that we, we can get the protein, but 
vegetable protein is uh, is uh, it's not active protein, so it's like uh, it's very hard to absorb in your body. So that's usually vegan. Uh, they have a trouble to it, so that's why you have to stick to like beans and uh, nuts and seed. You know, that's going to be the extra source for you, the protein. Okay, there's yeah. a lot. Uh, there's a lot of information. Uh, second, uh, I wanted to ask you if someone is on the go, like some people, they don't have time to prepare food. They always eat out on the rest at the restaurant. What, what do you recommend uh, for them? Because if they want to eat healthy, but they're always on the go. So what do you recommend for them? Right. That's a really good question because uh, at the end of the day, like uh, we all want to be healthy. You know, we want to eat good food. Like we really squeeze, we, we are so busy. Like we have so many things to do and some, some mom is like they have a full-time job and then they have kids and then they have they they do multitask and they they got no time to take care of themselves. So uh especially handy is like I don't really suggest you to do like those like uh, already pre-made uh protein bar or power bar that's full of chemical and sugar anyway. So uh, don't go for that. And if you can actually if you have to eat out, but this day is a good pretty decent when you go to restaurant you can ask your server you know like uh, you can get some like uh, nice fish or even a uh, chicken and then you can actually don't think always a salad is healthy in the restaurant <laughs> because they add so much like uh, uh, stuff that you don't even know in there because they add so much sugar they say hidden sugar that coming from those salad dressing so uh, if you want to stick to like a low carb diet, you can do like uh, order some uh, protein and then ask them, have, can I have a steamed vegetable on the side? And then you can, or ask like, can I have just a salad, but I don't want a dressing. So can you give me some olive oil and balsamic vinegar? And every restaurant, they have that. And then you can ask extra like avocado as well. So you can eat that. It's, that's the eating smart. And you can do that. Or sometimes if you want to add some, uh, Carbs, you don't care about low carbs. You want to have some carbs. It's just to try to have some brown rice. You can have some wild rice. They have that in the restaurant. Like, uh, because uh, we are not living in 1950 or 1960. We're living 2021. So now this day, it's a green, especially white rice. It's like, it's like you're just eating sugar because they peeled all those fibers. So it's directly just getting to your bloodstream, the sugar. So it converted the sugar. So you want to go for, if you want to have grains, go for some beans and you go for some uh, brown rice, you know, that's actually better because they have, to con they have like high in fiber content. So you can go for it. So those are the main choices you can go for. There's not much really different, but restaurant, if you request, they can actually uh, give you that choice. Okay. Uh, so if you, uh, if you miss... Let's say you eat once, uh, once during the day. Can you? Do you still think someone will still have uh, a lot of energy uh, during the day for them to be productive? Like to have. Uh, uh, I love this question because you know why, Richard? Because this day a lot of people they heard about intermittent fasting, right? So people do like a 16 and eight. So they eat, uh, eating window is like eight hours and they have a fasting window is like a 16 hours. And there's a lot of benefit of doing uh, mini fasting and those intermittent fasting. Because remember this one, even like uh, when you look at the, do you, do you like pets, like cats or dogs or any animal? I don't mind. <laughs> I don't have. <laughs> okay. Okay. <I> <laughs> it's like uh, naturally the even animal when they are sick, they don't eat because when you're not eating by body, try to heal itself instead of metabolizing your food. So actually when you're not eating, it's a helping you. So people think, Oh, I haven't eaten like uh, uh, my lunch. So I haven't low energy. No, actually not because uh, here's the thing. Um, I don't know if uh, this one can, you can understand this human body. Even though you don't eat 40 days, you're not going to die. 
Yeah, but only <laughs> just uh, if you if you drink water, but you don't eat for 40 days, right? Absolutely. So human body, we if we don't eat over four days, we don't drink. We, yeah, we can die. Four days. So hydration is more important than actually, you know, eating. And then what is most important before hydration? If we don't breathe more than four minutes, most of the people will die. <laughs> so breathing air is number one, oxygen, and then water, hydration, and then it's food. So if you know what, if you... Um, if you think like, oh, I'm so busy, I cannot eat, you know, I might have to skip, you know, what was the best strategy? Either you don't eat breakfast and then you just eat lunch and dinner, or you can just skip all day just to hydrate yourself and you can just have a dinner. You may gonna have more energy because I tell you one thing, um, you know, where's the Silicon Valley, right? There's all those techie people, smart people, they're working there, right? Creating technology. And those people, when they actually create a new stuff, they go on fasting because they want that edge, that they want to alert to their brain, their sharpness. And then you know what? They don't even eat. Because when you don't eat a certain period, you actually increase your um, mitochondria in your brain. So actually, you know what? It's beneficial for you. So you actually get even better energy. So... I don't know if it's too in depth of fasting, but like, uh, don't worry about one meal skipping, you know, you're not going to die. And actually sometimes it's better for you. But when you want to skip the meal, don't skip like uh, eat breakfast, skip lunch and eat dinner. Don't do that. You're better off breakfast. Uh, uh, you skip the breakfast and have lunch and dinner or just to skip like uh, dinner, just to have a breakfast and lunch. So just to think of that is like a uh, spontaneous fasting. You know, you can do that. Yeah, I've done I've done fasting. I do fasting from time to time. So awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm still here, so I didn't die. <laughs> oh, that's good. And it's uh, it's very, we don't talk. Well, I don't know personally, but uh, people don't talk too much about uh, fasting. But mm -hmm. uh, fasting is very healthy. And uh, oh, fasting is a very much a therapeutic for many people if they. Uh, they done right, yeah. So, yeah. So, if uh, if someone is uh, uh, wants to replace a meal uh, because they don't have time to eat, do you what snacks that uh, they could eat? What are the foods that they could eat like to to replace? Let's say they don't like fasting, but they need something in their body. What kind of you know, food? Uh, I would suggest that because you don't have time to cook, then, you know, those like um, use those like a good um, quality of uh, nuts and seed. They're high in the vitamins and minerals uh, and it's a healthy fat and it, it, there is a protein as well. So um, grab some like uh, almonds, grab some like walnuts. It's very high in uh, omega-3 and <clears throat> what else like uh, macadamia nuts. They're also high in vitamin B source. And so have those nuts with maybe, you know, I personally, I'm not a really big fan of a protein powder because yeah, it's like a protein powder company gonna not going to like me. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> if, if, you know, someone is like really in a rush, they can't, you know, like I don't want to skip meal, then, you know, best is just to have the clean protein powder. There is out there a few. So clean powder, protein powder, add into some coconut water because they high, uh, they're high in the potassium as well. So that, or just even water, you shake it, you drink it and have some uh, nuts on the side. That's going to fill you up and you can do that. Or myself, like I make in advance, like a lot of bone broth when I have weekend. So I have my bone broth and then I just uh, live in my refrigerator. So when I just busy on the go, I just make my, you know, those are thermal my bottle i just add into uh, bone broth and i add like tons of turmeric 
and black pepper and then Himalayan salt and I do it, that's going to just uh, give a so satisfaction for myself. It, it's really satiated because it's a good protein and good fat. And those are gelatin going to convert as a collagen in your body. So, you know, I can do that as well. You can do that. And then some people just have just a, have a, even, I don't mind you have some bone broth with some like a carrot, raw carrots. You can actually do that. So you can have some better carotene. And by having bone broth, there's a good fat. So you can actually convert those better carotene in your carrots to vitamin A. So everything that you eat, like you have to think about how can I eat well so I can actually provide those nutrients in my body, in my cell. So I can thrive, you know, that's what you have to think. So instead of just go by those uh, already pre-made protein bar, just to at least have some, you know, the solid food on the go. So that's the best way. Or if worse comes worse, you can make a protein bar at home. You know exactly what ingredient in it. So you don't have to have those fillers, right? You just have a protein powder. You're going to have some... Uh, add some water, you're going to add some almond uh, butter, and then uh, you're going to add some little bit of tiny of like honey. So you make on your protein bar. So you can do that. So there's many ways to make sure you can be healthy, even though you don't have time. Okay. You said, uh, you said something, you said, how do you, uh, boom, because I, I've never heard of that. Maybe. Uh... Uh, bone broth is actually very good for you. Like I, Bone broth is very high in amino acid. So it's like uh, myself, when I have to write a book, when I have to write a, uh, all this uh, content, sometimes like, I don't have time to eat and I don't want to get up. And I just have like entire my job of bone broth. I drink it. And it's an excellent source of actually providing amino acid in your body. So what I do, I just tell you if you want to know how to make it. I just make it at home. Do you have like a slow cooker, like a crock pot? Uh, yeah. Oh, this is so lazy way to cook, but it's excellent. <laughs> so it takes five minutes to make it. And especially bone broth is excellent for actually seal your uh, intestine, the gut lining, if you have problem with your um, digestive system. So it's actually good for you too. It's almost like it's a therapeutic drinks. So... I just to go buy like a, those pasteurized free range, uh, the chicken feet, only feet, not even bones, just the feet, the chicken feet. So I just add about like 24 to 25 chicken feet in the crock pot. And I filled it with the filtered water. And I add some uh, fresh rosemary because it's going to bring down the uh, inflammation. It's number one is excellent herbs. So I added some rosemary and I added through some, a few, one or two, just large carrots. You don't even have to cut it. You just add it in. And I threw some two stalks of celery and I add a whole just red onion and I add some garlics. And then I add some four, cups of, uh, of the quarter cups of uh, apple cider vinegar because you want to extract all this the minerals from those the bones right so you want to add some apple cider vinegar and then you just uh, cover the lid and then you just turn on 20 hours slow low heat 20 hours yeah and then you don't have to look twice it's just 20 hours just to let it go yeah okay. and then after that when you finish you just uh, remove all those, you know what I mean, the, the bones and the just vegetable, and then just uh, strain those uh, broth, and then just uh, put it in your uh, glass jar, and then just to cool down, and after just to uh, um, add it into refrigerator, and then what happened next day? It looked like a uh, um, jelly. So what happened when you want to put it in your um, a thermal, your the uh, hot this bottle, when you want to go out, you just add a four to five tablespoon, those jelly, and then you add the hot water and they put some turmeric, black pepper, and the Himalayan salt, and then you just uh, go. It tastes amazing. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You can last those 24 
25 with chicken feet, if you make a bone broth, you can last about like a good two to three weeks, even though you drink every day because it's concentrate jelly, right? So that's how you make a bone broth. Two, three weeks? Yeah. Uh, diet. Uh, a lot of people, I don't, I don't think I ever went on a diet, but a lot of people uh, uh, do that. What's what's your uh, what's your take on that? What's your advice? What would you say to someone who wants to go on a, on a diet? Uh, you know, I Richard. Um, a lot of people they you know when they don't feel good and they want to change something, they want to go on to diet. And many clients they come to see me for diet plan as well. But uh, I always tell them if you want to go into the diet make sure that the diet is like you can do it and you can actually when you look at the diet you know what i can eat like this um rest of my life i'm good with it because you know at the end of the day the health is like it's a consistency you have to do it every day and we eat every day so if you want to choose a diet you diet that actually you enjoy every year meal, and then you can uh, sustain that. If you're going to do one month diet and you're going to get off, then just don't start it. Eventually, it's going to be yo-yo. Most of people, they go on diet wide. They want to uh, shed some body fat or whatever. They want to build some muscle or uh, gaining some weight, whatever that is. When you choose the diet, the diet has to be in your lifestyle. Otherwise, the people, they do all the time. They lose 5, 10 pounds and they gain back and then they go back and they gain back because it, it's, that, it's not sustained. They can't do it every day. So at the end of the day, when you pick the choose, so you're better off try to change your lifestyle instead of just going to diet. That's what I want to take you to tell you. So it's really interesting what you said. So if someone... You said a diet is a lifestyle. So let's say someone wants to start. So they want, you, let's say they start, uh, they do it for one month or two months. But if they want to keep the same level, like the, the weight, so it has to be like a lifestyle. So they can't like yo-yo go up and down. And No, you don't want to do that because once you decide to do, you know, like, uh, okay, Let's say, for instance, I want to lose, for instance, like I want to feel good. I want to increase my energy level and I want to lose, for instance, 20 pounds. And you're going to start looking at your calorie, macro, nutrient, and, you know, you try to get rid of your junk food. You know, don't make it complicated. As someone who want to start, it's just the first thing you have to do. Okay, I'm going to get rid of all this junk food. And I'm going to actually increase my uh, water intake or hydration. Most of the people, anyway, they are dehydrated. And then you're going to say, um, you know yourself what your bad habit. How many times you order pizza every week? Or, uh, you know what I mean? Like how many times you have fast food? Just get rid of all those things first. Just eliminate those things. And then just to try to eat whole food. By doing so, you're already going to lose 5 to 10 pounds. And then from there, and then you're going to feel better, and they continue to do that, and you feel like you're boring, you're eating something. And you know what? Then just to find something, you know what? I, I like something uh, crunchy stuff, but uh, salty food, but I don't want to have a chips. Then you know what? Try to find food that like, you know, like a dehydrated food, something healthy version. You can go for it, like a kale chips. You can go for like, a, you know, coconut chips. You can go like that instead of going to just those um, hydrogen, just oil, like those uh, chips, you know, potato chip. Most of people love potato chip, but that's actually not good for you. And study even show that, you know, people um, constantly eating potato chip. They have over five, 75% of people that actually get the cancer down the road. So you want to eliminate processed food first and then just to have whole food. And then from there, time to time, you know what? You go birthday party, you go actually some, you know, any Thanksgiving is coming anyway, so that you can treat 
well, just the one meal, that's fine, right? So let's say, uh, Richard, do you eat like three meals a day or two meals a day? <laughs> two meals a day, maybe. <laughs> okay, so you eat two meals a day. So let's say seven days, you eat like 14 meals, right? Seven days, you eat 14 meals. So 14 meals, let's say if you had one meal, kind of, you had bad meal. Most of people, bad meal is like what? Processed food or you had some dessert or you have some pizza. It's not so bad. But when you eat bad every day and then you have one good meal a week, it's not so good for your health. So you have to think about that one. So don't go to like strict diet when you do that because it's not realistic. So eventually you're going to break your diet and then you're going to feel guilty and then you, you know, you want to start all over again. When you feel bad, you actually doing more. That's how we work our brain. So instead of going those big, just a cycle, the pattern, breaking diet and going back, but just to eat, just to get rid of just junk food. If you really want to have junk food, just to choose one day and just one meal. And the rest of the other day, just to try to stick to like a whole food. That's a better diet than, you know, just to go under like a 900,000, 200 calorie and then starve yourself. And then the end, you know what I mean? Like uh, you binge, you know, the food. That's not good. Okay. Final, final words, final uh, words. What would, uh, what advice would you have on nutrition? work and productivity okay so this is a really my experience with my client most of my client today have their own profession and then most of people also they actually do their own business and it's their experience when they feed themselves good food and they feel better and you know what they say look at oh veronica my business uh, actually went up 25 percent by taking care of myself. And I always tell people, work is important. Everything is important, but you know, most important is when you lose your health, nothing is matter. So wake up in the morning, the first thing, the first hour, spend time for yourself, which is taking care of your health. It can be nutrition. It can be even exercise, anything. Anyway, it's a hand in hand exercise and nutrition hand in hand, do something for yourself every day, even though it's uh, within 30 minutes, do something for yourself. And then um, I wanted to tell you this one, do you sleep well? Sleeping is so important because if you have quality sleep, you have like a good quality six to seven hours of sleep every night you're gonna have a good energy the next day. When you wake up in the morning, you feel fresh, you're good, because when you are sleeping, the body heals. So you can go into your work and then it's gonna be a lot more productive. So that's what I actually wanted to tell you. Nutrition is important, but don't forget moving your body and you know what, having good night's sleep. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much, Veronica. This was very interesting. Uh, we need to do that again because there was a lot of information. Uh, yeah. I'm still going to have to replay a few times to, uh, to, get, uh, to get all the information because it was a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. For sure, I'm going to invite you again uh, very soon. Uh, we need to do this. And uh, where, where can we find you on uh, social media or website? Uh, I'm going to leave at the end of the, the video, I'm going to leave some information for people if they want to reach you or have more information. Mm -hmm. Where can uh, people can find you? Oh, you can find me. But if you want to contact me, you can contact me. My website is makeovernutrition.com. That's my website. You can contact me through there. And also social media, you can find me YouTube, Veronica Yu. Yu means Y-O-O. -O. And also you can find me Instagram, Makeover Nutrition by Veronica Yu. And also you can find me the LinkedIn. That's actually, you know, where you found me, right? So you can find me from Veronica Yu there. So that's my main or Facebook, Veronica Yu. So everything is Veronica Yu. When you just type in Veronica Yu, I'm going to appear there. 
So yes, I would love to connect with everyone. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Veronica. Like I said, I'm going to have uh, some information at the end of this, uh, of this recording. So this was the Q&A showdown. It was the topic on uh, nutrition with Veronica Yu. Uh, thank you very much, Veronica, for taking the time to do this with me and to accept my invitation. And uh, everybody on that note, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you another time on the Q&A showdown. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No problem. My work. My pleasure.